or strange compared to all the previous ones and maybe too narrow but still I'll go ahead with it the main objective of this presentation of this report was simply to draw people's attention to this challenge I will remind you what the contrast of uh, image is an old classical book called photographic vocabulary is saying that contrast of images is a visual uh, difference between a light and dark parts of the image another example definition of contrast uh, this is a ratio between dark and light parts of a uh, viewed image it's a geoinformatic vocabulary next ev everything was written when nobody knew or thought even about digital images so what is contrast of a digital image and how can it be measured in numbers that's what I'm going to talk about as long as the uh, values of pixels of a digital image uh, I would be the numbers characterize the lightness and discretization this contrast can be easily automatically measured in theory and at the same time it is one of the most interesting and important characteristics of a digital image and a digital image in general why is this characteristic important because when we consider the details of an image and uh, the interpretation capacities of an image largely depend not only on the nominal resolution uh, uh, by this I mean of course the size uh, ground sample size of a pixel which is used as part of the characteristics of different cameras and sensors and the contrast of an image because the lower the contrast the more will be the actual uh, resolution of the image itself and the possibility to distinguish small parts and details why the contrast is important because as I mentioned the interpretation capacities largely hinge on these two properties and because in order to assess the interpretation capacities of an object we need to understand and evaluate the threshold of contrast uh, sensitivity of an eye the quantitative number or value of contrast when we are working with digital images are used in the algorithms of automatic uh, as evaluation of the actual resolution of aerial or s satellite image how can we calculate contrast uh, based on the pixel size of an image I'm going to show you some formulas here of this evaluation based on different sources I would like to tell you that I'm not using exhaustively all of the sources of course available on the market now because there are a lot of them but I'm using the biggest authorities like the uh, reference book on photogrammetry for instance this is also the book by Puchkon of aerial photography of 1974 where this formula is also used in in aerial imagery of ghost this is state standard committee publication and in this way they try to f show the contrast formula where k is unsizable value changing from zero to one in future I will use such norm uh, such term as an a standardized value from zero to one and I can say that starting from this to make it simpler we're going to look only at panchromatic images and use them as an example here here we have viewed this formula you can see it once again on this slide and what can we say what specificity can we see here typical for the digital image with 80 bit per pixel sampling for each color component or for or 8 bit for black and white and or 8 bit for gray semitones we see a strange result here 
which shows that w with the values of a pixel within the range of 255 and 0, these are the maximum levels of contrast like absolute white or absolute black. Based on this formula, we get uh, contrast which equals 1. And for the values of um, uh, pixel value of 1, well, you cannot tell any difference between 1 and 0. Usually, again, we have the contrast coefficient equaling 1. Is it, in other words, convenient to use the same formula to define a contrast? I think it is strange, at least. Let us look at other things. Maybe it's because it's, uh, there are zeros and ones there. No, 255 and 1, for instance, here. And the contrast is 0.99 for such uh, object and uh, 0.90 for such an object with uh, hardly visible these parts and for pixel with a value of 20. And again, another example where we see the difference between the values of the sizes of pixels is the same both in here and here. Visually, of course, we have, can have different tastes and uh, somebody could say that this image is more, it has higher contrast this, than this one or some other people could say this. But the d difference is uh, same, 129, but the difference is uh, 0.33 and here 0.98. Again, uh, it's a strange characteristics here. Let's take other possibilities to manifest contrast in different literature, like Schoenberg book, the Remote Sensing Models and Methods of uh, Image Processing, you can see here. So we have the following set of uh, formulas to define contrast. The first one is like a difference between these two values, but this is not a standardized value. It is. Uh, it shows the number of pixels, and the maximum one for 8-bit one would be 255. Next one, it's an uh, unsizable value, but it is not applicable for the uh, pixel value of 0. Next, where contrast is defined as a standard deviation, a standard deviation of the value of a pixel, but on the average for the whole image. And it is defined, it is not standardized, but in general it characterizes the level of contrast of an image as a statistical value or characteristic. Here you can see that the same formulas are used in other books as well. Now let us look at the formulas that we have looked at already, how they work under special objects in such interesting images. We have very good, exciting examples here and results of contrast calculation. For instance, for this one, we have absolutely different results, 255, 127. At the same time, in fact, it's the same thing, right? For this thing, we have very close values which is uh, reflecting the reality, actually. Yet another option here to define a contrast that we can find in literature. An example of how it can be used. For instance, this here we use uh, unsizable value changing from 0 to 1. And the result is such that for such an image, which shows much lower contrast than the right image, the value of the is about the same as for this object. Again, it looks strange. It's inconvenient to use such an indicator because 
it's inadequately uh, reflecting the visual reality. Here on this slide, you can see the whole range of examples of computation of contrast values. Based on all those formulas, you can see the values of maximum minimum values of a pixel. And here, in yellow, you can see examples of such test sites for which it was calculated. We can see that the most adequate result that can be acquired here that follows our visual perception that we have for this calculation formula and for this also. But in both cases, it's these are unstandardized and unsizable values. That's why, as uh, an indicator for contrast, I suggest using the following formula, which is, I'd say, an improvement over the ones I've shown you before. And in this case, we'll get standardized and unsizable value of contrast, which is more adequate, unsizable and standardized. Here you can see them mentioned in this rows as an indicator. You can see that indeed they show situation close to real reality and uh, adequately viewed picture. Let us also introduce another definition of local contrast. This is the ratio of light and uh, dark parts of neighboring objects. To assess this localized contrast, it would be lo more logical to use such a formula out of the ones that we discussed already. And it can be applied to uh, the brightness transition pixels at the borderline of uh, dark and light objects. Now, I suggest we look at some of the examples how these indicators work based on actual images. Like here we have such an image. I would think it's not really a contrasty picture. There are some small bright spots, but in general it's a low contrast image. Here you can see the maximum minimal values, but there are very few maximal values. That's why we see that in general the global characteristic of the contrast of the image would be more adequately reflected by this indicator based on standardized deviation. And uh, we also see an adequate reflection in this indicator based on another formula that we introduced. It's a localized contrast, but calculated based on about 2,000 such brightness transitions. And we took the average value. And this one is not an average value, just a maximum minimal ratio. So this indicator also works. Here you can see the same thing, an image which is much more contrasty. This indicator, I think, are more adequately reflecting the range uh, can be from 0 to 255 and these indicators adequately demonstrate what we are observing here. And uh, this is the image of Mira, also a very contrasty image. You can again see how these indicators work. In this case, we're talking about um, the value based on the standardized deviation, which shows quite a high value. This one is even higher. Same mirror, but uh, with very low contrast and the indicators adequately reflected. So this is a maquette table, which is interesting because the step of this table is the same between these steps. That's why the local contrast value is small and general contrast is very high, both for standard deviation and for the maximum value. 
And finally, conclusions. What can we get at the end? As a general assessment of contrast throughout the whole field of digital image, it would be more logical to use unsizable uh, standardized indicators like this based on standard deviation. And for assessment of local contrast, it's more efficient to use an unsizable normative indicator of this type. And this indicator can also be used to assess the interpretation properties of the image in general. If we uh, consider it based on the number of brightness transitions, and then it will characterize the image not only of a particular object or section, but the image as a whole. Thank you. Questions? As I understand, there are no questions. Oh, no. Yuri Reisman has a question. Will it be included into the instructions on photogrammetric works, which is going to be issued one day or another? There, it is a possibility. No, it is a, indeed an important and serious question because it's not addressed anywhere. I do not exclude such an eventuality because some indicators of this contrast are is a numerical uh, quantification of what we see on histogram. But as long as histogram cannot be characterized by one single number, then instead of this, this image could be characterized by two or three different interlinked values or indicators like the contrast. And uh, for instance, I'm thinking also the number of the quantity of maximal and minimal values of pixel, like 0 and 1 pixels, 255 for 8-bit image. On the correctly exposed image, there should be uh, no zero images, and the contrast must be high. How high is difficult to say now, because it largely depends on the object itself and how the image was processed. Thank you. And uh, another question. Yes, please. Viktor Nikolaevich is not going to ask questions. Okay. I'm not a uh, specialist on physiology of perception, but as far as I remember, person's senses, they can resume. I, aren't you going to use logarithm for this, which is measured in decibels, for instance? Yes, we were thinking about it. And we found even sources in literature. I don't remember where it was properly described in a book, which is an old one, I think from 1950s. No, I'm sorry. It's a mistake. I don't remember now. No, I wanted to say another thing. We have tried to, to develop a logarithm, but in this case, a logarithm doesn't adequately reflect this dependency and perception of contrast by a human eye and the numerical ratio of values. And there is no interconnection here. But I'm talking standardized difference. Standard, yeah, I understand standardized difference. But this is didn't show adequacy for the visual perception. Okay, I understand. Another question. Maybe it's not about your theme, but on the space image data, there are some objects which have linear size less than the source resolution. Sometimes we can see, say. Most recent examples, like wires, yes, like wires, for instance, or um, shades of wires. What is the role of contrast in this case? Maybe you can 
tell us about the physics of the process itself. What's the role of contrast or contrast uh, characteristics in uh, detecting such objects like power lines, for example? It's quite great, undoubtedly. This is totally evident, and you could have seen yourself that uh, such objects are essentially seen much better against one background and cannot be seen at all against others. It's easy to, to, to see, just look at different uh, examples of that image. I understand what he meant. That's exactly my point. Even the uh, lines, you know, power lines. I uh, was curious enough and I looked at lines uh, on the same image. The same image in different parts of the image, it, it can be visible or invisible. Вопрос, который uh, здесь обсуждался, uh, выходит на разрешение, и вообще можно было бы связать разрешение и контраст. Таким образом, вы можете ответить на вопрос, использование MDF или OTF. Я так понимаю, это скорее не вопрос, Я, я бы хотел сказать, что эта задача, мы начали ее реализовывать, задумались вообще о ней, потому что нам необходимо оценить реальное разрешение, изображение, а не разрешение, размер пикселя на местность. Я полностью... И мы использовали для этого МПФ, поскольку нам нужна пониженная контрастность, которая позволяет увидеть минимальный размер линии или провода. Other questions? Что Okay, then, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Now I'm leaving and I give the floor, the microphone to Victor.